Act five, scene two, a hall in the castle. Enter Hamlet and Horatio. So much for this, sir. Now you should see the other. Do you remember all the circumstance? Remember it, my lord? Sir, in my heart, there was a kind of fighting that would not let me sleep. There's a divinity that shapes our ends, refuse them how we will. That is most certain. Up from my cabin, groped I to find out them. I stole their packet, and in fine withdrew to mine own room again, my fears forgetting matters to unseal their grand commission. Where I found Horatio, a royal knavery, an exact command that my head should be struck off. Is it possible? Here's the commission. Read it at more leisure. But wilt thou hear me how I did proceed? I beseech you. I sat me down, devised a new commission, wrote it fair, an earnest conjuration from the king, that on the view and knowing of these contents without debatement further, more or less, he should the bearers put to sudden death. How was this seal? I had my father's signet in my purse, which was the model of that Danish seal, folded the writ up in form of the other, placed it safely, the changeling never known. So Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Why, man, they did make love to this employment, they are not near my conscience. Tis dangerous when the baser nature comes between incensed points of mighty opposites. Why, what a king is this? Does it not, thinkest thee, stand me now upon? He that hath killed my king and whored my mother, cocked in between the election and my hopes, is not in perfect conscience to quit him with this arm? And is not to be damned to let this canker of our nature come into further evil? It must be shortly known to him from England. What is the issue of the business there? It will be short. The interim is mine. But I am very sorry, good Horatio. That's hilarious since I forgot myself. I'll court his favors. But sure, the bravery of his grief did put me into a towering passion. Peace. Who comes here? Enter Osric with his most flamboyant hat. Your lordship is right. Welcome back to Denmark. I humbly thank you, sir. Dost thou know this waterfly? No, my good lord, except that he is always about. Thy state is the more gracious, for tis a vice to know him. He hath much land and fertile. Tis a crow, but, as I say, spacious in the possession of dirt. Hamlet comes near. Osric removes his hat and puts it behind him to keep it safe. Sweet lord. If your lordship were at leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. I will receive it, sir, with all diligence of spirit. Put your bonnet to its right use. Tis for the head. I thank your lordship. It is very hot. No, believe me, tis very cold. The wind is northernly. It is indifferent cold, my lord, indeed. But yet methinks it is very sultry and hot for my complexion. Exceedingly, my lord, it is very sultry, as twere, I cannot tell how, but my lord, his majesty bade me signify to you that he has laid a great wager on your head, sir. This is the matter that I beseech you, remember. Hamlet moves him to put on his hat. Sir, here is newly come to court Laertes. Believe me, an absolute gentleman, full of most excellent differences, of very soft society and great showing, indeed. What imports the nomination of this gentleman? Of Laertes? Purse is empty already. All golden words are spent. Of him, sir. You are not ignorant of what excellence Laertes is. I dare not confess that, lest I should compare with him in excellence. But to know a man well were to know himself. I mean, sir, for his weapon. What's his weapon? Rapier and dagger. That's two of his weapons, but... Well, the king, sir, hath wagered him with six Barbary horses against the which he has imponed, as I take it, six French rapiers. Why is this imponed, as you call it? 
the king, sir, hath laid that a dozen passes between yourself and him. He shall not exceed you three hits, and it would come to immediate trial if your lordship would vouchsafe the answer. Let the foils be brought, the gentleman willing, and the king holds his purpose. I will win for him if I can. If not, I will gain nothing but my shame and the odd hits. Shall I read deliver you even so? To this effect, after what flourish your nature will. I commend my duty to your lordship. Yours. Yours. Exit, Osric. He does well to commend it himself. But the lapwing runs away with the shell on his head. He did comply with his dug before he sucked it. You will lose this wager, my lord. I do not think so. Since he went into France, I have been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. If your mind is like anything, obey it. I will forestall the repair hither and say you are not fit. Not a whit. We defy augury. There's a special providence in the fall of the sparrow. If it be now, tis not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come, the readiness is all. Enter King Claudius, Queen Gertrude, Laertes, Lords, Osric, and attendants with foils. Come, Hamlet, come, and take this hand from me. King Claudius puts Laertes' hand into Hamlet's. Give me your pardon, sir. I've done you wrong. I've shot mine arrow o'er the house and hurt my brother. I am satisfied in nature, whose motive in this case should stir me most to my revenge. But in my terms of honor I stand aloof. But till that time, I do receive your offered love like love, and will not wrong it. I embrace it freely, and will this wager frankly play. Give us the foils. Come on. Come. One for me. Give them the foils, young Osric. Cousin Hamlet, you know the wager. Very well, my lord. Your grace hath laid the odds of the weaker side. I do not fear it. I have seen you both. This is too heavy. Let me see another. This likes me well. They prepare to play. Set me the stoops of wine upon that table. If Hamlet give the first or second hit, or quit in answer of the third exchange, let all the battlements their ordinance fire. The king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath, and in the cup a union shall he throw, richer than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. Give me the cups, and let the kettle to the trumpet speak, the trumpet to the cannoneer without. The cannons to the heavens, the heavens to earth. Now the king drinks to Hamlet. Come, begin, and you, the judges, bear a wary eye. Come on, sir. Come, my lord. They play. One. No. Judgment. A hit, a very palpable hit. Well, again. Stay. Give me drink. Hamlet, this pearl is thine. Here's to thy health. Trumpet sound and cannon shot off within. Give him the cup. I'll play this bout first. Set it by a while. Come. They play. Another hit. What say you? A touch, a touch, I do confess. Our son shall win. He's fat and scant of breath. Here, Hamlet, take my napkin, rub thy brows. The wean carouses to thy fortune, Hamlet. Good madam. Gertrude, do not drink. I will, my lord, I pray you pardon me. Gertrude drinks. It is the poisoned cup. It is too late. I dare not drink yet, madam, by and by. Come, let me wipe thy face. My lord, I'll hit him now. Um, I do not think it. And yet tis almost against my conscience. Come for the third, Laertes. You but dally, I pray you, pass with your best violence. I am afeard you make a wanton of me. Say you so. Come on. They play. <laughs> Way. Have at you now. Laertes wounds Hamlet, then in scuffling they chain rapiers, and Hamlet wounds Laertes. 
Depart them! They are incensed! Nay, come again! And Gertrude falls. Look to the queen there! Ho! Bleed on both sides! How is it, Laertes? Why, as a woodcock to mine own springe, Osric, I am justly killed with mine own treachery. How does the queen? She swoons to see them bleed. Oh, no, the drink! The drink! Oh, my dear Hamlet, the drink! I am poisoned. Gertrude dies. Oh, villainy! Oh, let the door be locked! Treachery! Speak it out! It is here, Hamlet. Hamlet, thou art slain. No medicine in the world can do, do thee good. In thee there is not half an hour of life. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbated and envenomed. The foul practice hath turned itself on me low. Here I lie, never to rise again. Thy mother poisoned. I can no more. The king, the king's to blame. The point, envenomed too, then venom to thy work. Hamlet stabs Claudius. Treason! 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 Oh, yet defend me, friends. I am but hurt. Here, thou incestuous, murderous, damned Dane, drink off this potion. Is thy union here? Follow my mother! King Claudius dies. He is justly served. It is a poison tempered by myself. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's death come not upon thee, nor thine on me. Laertes dies. Heaven make thee free of it. I follow thee. I am dead, Horatio. Wretched queen, adieu. You that look pale and tremble at this chance, that are but mutes or audience to this act. Had I but time, as this fell sergeant's death is strict in his arrest. Oh, I could tell you. But let it be. Horatio, I am dead. Thou livest, report me in my cause a right to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I am more an antique Roman than a Dane. Here's yet some liquor left. As thou art a man, give me the cup. Let's go by heaven. I'll have it. Oh, good Horatio. What a wounded name. Things standing thus unknown shall live behind me. I die, Horatio. The potent poison quite o'ercrows my heart. If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, absence thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. The rest is silence. Hamlet dies. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Upon Horatio's command, Marcellus, Francisco, and Bernardo lift Hamlet, and others lift Laertes and Gertrude to be solemnly carried off. Claudius remains on stage, his body unattended by all except Osric, who sits beneath the throne and places his head in his hand, mourning his own loss. Horatio considers them scornfully and leaves. Lights fade to black on the shattered dreams of manipulative schemers. <laughs>